Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So we're really excited for this new series. Um, if you haven't seen our intro, we are starting a new video series on any parts, accessories, reviews that we do with our machines, anything new that we're gonna pretty much put on them. So to start this first video part of this series, we are gonna be installing a brand new high lifter bumper onto our new 2021 Polaris Razor Trail S uh, machine that we have. So I'm gonna flip you guys around so you can see the machine. We'll check out the bumper. So in today's video, we are gonna install the Polaris bumper with the worn 4500 wench. Um, so let's just do the unboxing. We'll see what it looks like. So we went with the black bumper. It's the shorter one, so it doesn't cover the headlights. So we wanted uh, to be able to show the fang lights since they redid the front end. So we're gonna get this started. We're gonna get this bolted on and then we'll take you along for the ride for that. So stay tuned. So here we go, guys. So we started installing the bumper wench part. I'm not sure if you can see this. Might need to get a light. So there's a plate that comes with the bumper that they recommend installing, especially if you're going to put the wench on the front bumper. So you get this plate here. Get in here for you. Get this plate here that just gives some more support for the wench and the bumper together. So Sterling has already kind of fished this through. Um, it takes him for nagling to get in there, but eventually it does sit perfectly on top of this area here. And then there's four bolts. Yeah, four bolts. There's four bolts that you would install in the back part. Four, four small carriage bolts in the back. There's two back there. And the holes, there's square holes. And two up front here. There's square holes for the carriage bolt. So, the carriage bolt has a, like a square nut built onto the bolt. And then it fits into the square hole. And that's what helps lock in place for when you put the nut on. That carriage bolt can't spin, so you can tighten it. So we're going to get the rest of this all tightened down and then we'll bring you back for the next step. Okay guys, so we got the back bracket for the support for the winch and bumper back here. As you can see, the light, that's what it looks like. Okay, get a little bit closer. So right there, so we got the four bolts into that. It calls for 20 pounds of torque if you're going to torque it. Um, we got them in there pretty tight, so we should be good to go. So then the next step, we took the grill off. So now we're going to install this plate right here for support in the front. And then it gets sandwiched with this little small plate. So we're going to take that, and this goes into the grill area right here. It goes just like this. Sits right down so in there. Sits right in that groove. And then you take the plate with your hand in here like this. And put it up on there like that. Line up the holes. And that plate has uh, nuts welded on it already. So we're gonna get these two pieces installed and we'll be back. Okay, so we got those two bolts bolted into that part with that bracket on the bottom. They're a uh, 15 millimeter bolt head. So now we're gonna install two bolts, one here and one over here to stiffen up the front part of the bracket. With a lock nut on the back and by the look of it, it looks like they're the same bolt head so 15 millimeter bolt head 
Okay guys, so the next piece we're going to install is this bracket that goes behind where the bumper would be. It attaches to the support piece. So pretty much we're just going to fish it through. You reach through the wheel well. It just hooks on to the support beam that we put in before. Right there. And then it has two nuts welded onto the plate. So when we put the bumper on, the bumper will attach into that piece also. So since that's on, so now we just gotta install the black plastic that sits over top of this. So we'll install that next. snaps over top and then there's two torx bits that are so here we got the bumper so pretty much all we have to do now is just install the bumper so we got the two top mounts for these two right here so this hole and this hole here, and then we got the bottom mount, so we got these two, which will mount down here. So we're going to get this installed. So I'll take the bumper. You got your bolts. guys so we got the bumper fully installed now everything's bolted down so now we just gotta install the grill back so we'll install that quick and then you can see what it looks like Well, we got a little issue. The grill's not fitting. So we'll be back. Okay, guys, so we're back. So we saw that the bumper wasn't fitting right. So we did some research and went online. And we came to find out that in the instructions, they consider this bumper a high lifter bumper. But on their website for Polaris, it's just considered a regular bumper. So we had to call Polaris and we realized that the stop grill will not fit due to this part here and this section here. So as when Sterling was putting it in, <clears throat> you realize that it gets stuck. get it past this section. So if you are installing this type of bumper, you cannot use your stock grill. So you have to buy a high lifter grill. So we got the part, so we're gonna have to order that. So until then, we need that out anyway to install the winch. So <clears throat> we're moving over 
and we are going to install the winch. So we got a worn 4500 winch. It comes with a rocker switch and a handheld switch. I'm going to lift this up. <clears throat> lift this up so you can. Oh, there might be a glare. All right there. So we got that style. So we're going to unwrap this. Um, get this all situated and we'll be right back okay guys so we got the wedge all taken out of the box so Starling's just going to show you guys what's all in the box that when you order it so you got your wedge it's a worn 4500 synthetic rope acts on then you got your your mounting bolts and nuts. Then you got your wench hook. Then you have your your wiring harness. So this will be able to hook up a handheld remote and the other part of the wiring harness will hook up to a rocker switch. Then you have your positive and negative battery wires that go to your wench. You have your synthetic rope sleeve. And you have your fair lead. It's not a, a roller fair lead because uh, it's a synthetic rope. It's not steel. And then you have your worn handheld remote. And then you have your instruction manual. And we're going to install the rocker switch plus the handheld, correct? Yes, we're going to install them uh, both. So that if uh, one doesn't work, uh, hopefully, most likely, the other one will work. Okay. So we're going to get to the process of installing this. So Sterling's going to take the winch and we're going to place it on the bumper. <clears throat> So they pretty much just match up with the holes that were in the bumper? Yeah, there's two holes up front here, two holes on this side up front, and then there's the same in the back, uh, two and two. This way if you have a wider wench or a little skinnier wench, uh, they give you the option of two different holes. So this is how close it will sit. Um, like we said, we have to get a flatter grill, so the grill will sit more into here, so we shouldn't have any issues. And then we'll probably just run the wires underneath the grill. Yeah. And we'll figure out how they'll get all ran that way. <clears throat> so we'll get the bolts situated, and we'll get this all mounted. <clears throat> so stay tuned okay so we got the bolts and we're gonna get ready to mount this so sterling uh, the heads are a uh, 13 millimeter I'm gonna put a uh, Loctite on it why do you put Loctite on it well there's a lock washer on here but I'm putting Loctite on it because 
any bolts that I go to put in place anymore, I like to put Loctite on it so that then they don't have so much of a chance to come loose. So it's, pretty, it's a tight fit in there. You gotta line it up perfectly. I'm not sure if you guys can see this. So we're still putting the bolts into the wench. Um, some of the areas are pretty tight to get to, so you have to have pretty skinny hands to get it into the group. But Sterling has a uh, comment for everyone. Yeah, you try and put a a wench on this type of bumper. Put the wench on the bumper before you install the bumper, because. Even my real small hands, I'm having a heck of a time getting my hand up in there to get this bolt in to screw it into the hole. Not sure if you can see it. Let's see if I can flip this around here. Let's see where the hole is. Yeah, it's way up here. Way up there. Well, my hand's in the way, but it's way up there. You can probably see it with the light being up there. So. Note to self, if you get this high lifter bumper and you're installing a winch, put the winch on first before you install the bumper. So we're going to try getting these other bolts in and we'll be back. Okay guys, so we got the bumper all bolted in. Took a little bit. Like we said, it's a tight uh, squeeze to get into the area that needed all the bolts. But the bolts are pretty much in there. So the Loctite down to what they need to be. So now we're gonna install the metal fair lead. Fair lead that goes in front of the bumper here. It's pretty much you just fish through the rope. use the provided bolts. And what kind of bolts are these? They're uh, Allen bolts. They take an Allen wrench and then uh, the nut is a lock nut. Nylon nut. Lock nut. I'm not sure what size it is yet because I didn't check. I'll check in a minute. I want to say it's a uh, 15. So we're back. So now we're just trying to figure out how we want to run the power wires from the wedge. So they plug into these two ports right here. There you go, you can see them now. So the power and the negative go from here, and we gotta take that and go through to the battery. So we're only limited to so much space within the grill, because you have your support bar in here. Not sure if you can see it. So you got your support bar, which we gotta go under. So we're kind of going under and then we're going to follow the frame, but the only part of the frame we can follow is that section there, which is pretty tight to run wireline through. So then we were thinking of running it straight through and going where the support plate is down there since the remote wires will have to follow that line come up here two will have to go through the firewall piece to go to the dash and then the 
power part will go to the pulse bar. But now the power wires themselves, like I said, our plan was we were now, we're also gonna take off the centerpiece plastic to see into the drive shaft area. And we're gonna see what kind of clearance we have because we know on our 50 inch model trail, there wasn't a lot of room in the drive shaft area. And then to route it back up to the battery, there wasn't a lot of room to fish the wires through. So we're gonna see what kind of room we have in here. So we got the center piece all taken off. So we're gonna see maybe how from factory it has wires, as you can see, coming up over top of here underneath the center console and then coming through here. So we're thinking maybe we could do the same concept, run it through, but come on this side, zip tie to the top of these. And as long as it clears, we might be able to run it this way and then through to the battery. So we might try fishing that through. Okay guys, so we ran the negative wire to fish it through to see if this is what we're gonna do. And we're thinking this is what we're gonna do. So like I said, the wires will hook up to the wrench right here. So pretty much start of the negative, we're gonna cut the rest of this wire, of course. But the negative wire would hook up here. So I can get you in here. So we have the wire here, and then we fished it in between these two bars. So we're leaving the new grill just sit and go over, it'll have a gap here, so this shouldn't have any issues. And then we kind of fished it all the way through underneath that original support plate that we put in. And then, that section there where Sterling's hand is. So we fished it over top of the plate in between the two radiator hoses following the other wire looms that are back there from stock already. Okay, so you can see it better here. So we ran the wire, as you can see down here. We came up, so it's gonna follow the water hose, and then these wires go down through the drive, drive shaft area. So we went through there. And then we ran it through here, and pretty much we're just gonna zip tie it and just follow the stock wires that are already have running follow through it on that side and then if you want to take this and then wrap it around here and then come back up here run it through and since we're going to take these off anyway because we're going to have to loosen the bolts we'll finagle them to sit perfectly on the battery so that's a negative wire so now we're going to run the positive wire we're going to try following the exact same line and try zip tying them to these areas here and then we'll be back and we'll show you how we're going to hook it up to the battery. Okay guys, so we got the wrench all hooked up to the plugs right here. So we got the power and the negative there. We zip tie them together here. We got the boot on. And then not sure if you can see. We did add a zip tie here to kind of hold the wire together here. Like we said, we fished it through. So eventually we are going to zip tie them to the plate there and then finish finish running them through and hooking them up to the battery. Hey guys, so it's a new day. So last night we were working on running the wires for the wench. So right now, so far we've gotten this one. We've already zip tied the wires to the bar right here. So 
now we're through. And the end pieces that uh, come with the harness for the wedge actually are too small to go over the bolts that come stuck on the battery. So what Sterling needs to do is he needs to drill the holes a little bit a little bit bigger so they would fit over the battery bolts. It's a uh, five sixteenth bit. to go too much because you don't want to thin out one side rather than the other for the way the hole originally was to begin with. It'll fit right on there. So we're going to get these finished and flatten these wires out onto the battery and then we'll bolt them down and we'll be back. all zip tied <clears throat> to follow the path of the other wires that already come from that section. And it's above this plastic so it shouldn't interfere with the drive shaft and it'll just be right underneath the center console. So now we just pretty much we're gonna fish it into this area and figure out how we're gonna make it lay to attach to the battery. We'll be back. Okay guys, so we hooked up, because we're going to test the winch out, so we hooked up the remote wire to the plug. We ran down and underneath the plastics piece here, and it's like sitting in there. So we plugged in the remote. So this one comes with a handheld remote, which gets plugged into this section here and then there's another section here which would be where the rocker switch goes and then it has this wire here for the power to the remotes and then a fuse block so pretty much Sterling's going to explain what we have to do to hook all this up all right so once you get your power and ground wire hook to the winch then you run it back and you hook the power and ground wire to the battery and then there's a little plug that comes off of the winch that <coughs> plugs into this wiring harness for both your switches your handheld remote and your rocker switch then you take the power wire for the switches and you uh, run it to a power source. Now in this case I don't want this the switch to always have uh, power. I only want the switch to have power when I turn the key on to be able to work the winch just so that there's a uh, no possible way that it could uh, drain the battery. 
So, what you gotta do to hook uh, this up directly to the switch is you gotta buy these connectors. And that's because? And that's because of the pulse bar. You connect it into there. So you take this plug out, and then you plug that wiring harness in there. And then, to only give it power when the key is on, you hook it to the, the blue wire. The red wire is constantly hot, as you can see. The key is completely off, but this constantly has power, the red wire. And now if I touch it to the blue, you can see there's no power. Key on, the uh, blue wire has power. Now if I turn the key off, now there's no power to the winch switch. So that is why I'm hooking up power wire for the switch wiring harness to the blue wire because the blue wire is a remote wire which is your key ignition switch wire. So we're just gonna get these all wired together. We'll run the wires. Um, we'll end up having to take the dash part, the front part of the dash off so we can run the rocker switch and the plug that for the handheld is going to go into this section here. Do you want to show where the handheld is going to go? Now it's going to go in this center box. I'm going to put it in the center box, which I already took it apart to be able to move it out so that I can throw a hole in it. But my handheld is going to go in here. So I'm going to drill this out, and then I'm going to mount the the end part of the wire for the switch I'm gonna mount this drill that hole out and mount this right in here like that also got to take this box out so there was two push pins one there and one there, and then this will just pop right out. Huh. You might not make, actually need to take the whole dash off. Yeah, because I can see the hole there. So, the hole's actually big enough if you just take out the box, but if you did want to take the whole dash off, you just take off those pieces, and then this yeah, should just, just all pop off. So, you don't have to take out those. You could just take out the two push pins here, take this box out, and then you're able to get to the rocker switch area. And we should be able to fish the wires through to come up here where the box would sit, where we're going to attach the remote harness. So we'll get back to doing that and we'll be back. Okay guys, so we fished the wire that goes from the remote. So here is the power wire. As you can see, we fished it. Let's get in here. We fished it into the grommet hole thing to go through the firewall. Under Jash. 
but here's the power wire so like we said we're going to hook this up to this blue wire and then we're actually just going to cut these two off because we won't need them that way the remotes only have power when the key is on these always have power which we don't need so we're just going to cut these guys off we're going to mount these two together all the excess wire we put down here give you a better look so we just wrapped it up zip tied it to that support plate that we have here right there And then, like I said, we fished it through. And I'm not sure if you could see, let me get a light. So we fished it through up there. And then we have it coming here. So it's pretty much going to Oops. my bad. So we got, this is the remote one. So that guy's gonna go in here where the box is. And then we have the wench rocker switch one, which is gonna get mounted up here into this spot right here. So that's the next step. So we're gonna get these guys mounted up. Um, and then we'll bring you back once that's all mounted. Okay guys, so we got the plug fully installed now so that's all there we zip tied it here and here just to give up this some slack so we didn't want the slack hanging and it's just nicely sitting against the cooling container so now that all this is done now we're gonna move to installing the remote into the box situated so we gotta screw into there's two holes in there so we're gonna screw into the holes to mount get this light quick there you go so we're gonna, there's two screws in there so we're gonna mount it into that part and then we'll be back all right now we ran the wires for the the wench to the battery got them all tied in bolted it onto the battery got the rocker switch here for the winch got the hand remote for the switch for the winch there I'm gonna turn it on see that the light lights up so light that means lights we got up. power oh well, there's power to the switch Okay. So everything's set up, it works. So we're good there. As you can see the fang lights with the bumper kind of lights up the wench, accents it. Like we said, we still need to get the grill, the fit. So we got that all set up. What's next? Now I'm gonna put a tablet box up here. Okay, so that's the next thing. So this is a Kemi Moto. Kemi. Kemi Moto storage box to replace the stock one. And these 
these two plastic plugs. It's in pretty nicely, just like we said, just takes place of the old box, which is right here. So this is the stock one. So it just says razor on it, it's the same size. And then hold on one second. This side opens, so you can see how deep that is for storage. Put two screws right in the bottom part of the box where you put the clips. So like we said, this is also a tablet mount plus storage, so the storage part, you just pop that open. It looks like it's about the same size, maybe a tad bigger than the stock one for storage wise. Um, looks like there's two little holes in there, right, in the back? Yeah. Uh, Are they just colorations? Is that solid through? It's solid. Okay. Yeah. So it looks like this would be pretty good for waterproof, but we always still recommend put stuff in Ziploc bags, just if you're gonna do that stuff. And then to adjust the tablet mount part of it, it has the turn knob, the adjusting knob in the inside, and then it can adjust. Do you know how big of a tablet could possibly go in here? No, not offhand. I've seen 10.5 inch tablets on them so that's a possibility of a probably the biggest one you can uh, get in there because like we said we run lifetime trail maps and that's a what size lifetime trail map so the one that i have is 10.5 so we just have our other basic tablet which is an eight inch so we can at least show you what it looks like when it has a tablet installed. takes up the rest of your dash. So overall it, it's a really nice fit. It 
gives you, at least if you're running any GPS or playing music, if you don't have the ride command or anything like that, it works out. It's right in the dash since they put the gauge for the new trails right behind the steering wheel rather than in the center like the older models. And this sits pretty tight onto the tablet, so it should be good when you're riding the trails, if you're going over any rocks or hills and rattling around. It shouldn't. Yeah, really with go that anywhere. rubber with that rubber case sitting on that mount. I now this does come with rubber pieces, right? Yeah, it comes with this uh, foam strip. Okay, so it comes with a foam strip, but since our smaller tablet has a rubber piece, we didn't have to install it. Yeah. And our lifetime tablet has a case around it, um, so we should be good there. But if we wanted to, we could put the strips on to give it a little bit more cushion. So overall, guys, so this is what our entire dash is going to look like. Um, we'll probably have another rocker switch for um, the cube lights, and eventually, if we install any other items, we still got plenty of rocker switch spots. Um, but overall, this is what the dash will look like. It's pretty sleek looking. I personally have no complaints. The wench works pretty well. Everything's all set up. So pretty much that's what it looks like. As you can see, bumper wench with the hood on. Like I said, we still got to get the grill. So overall, it wasn't too bad. We'll get a quick one rundown from Sterling of what he thought of installing the bumper, the wench, and the storage box for a quick review and what his takes are before we end the video. So Being Sterling has in place. So what I would recommend is mount your wench onto the bumper first before you install the bumper to the machine. This way, then you can have your the bumper flipped over upside down, and then you should be able to get to the bolts to mount the wench on uh, a lot easier. Uh, so that's what I would do. And then the only uh, other little downfall is these two nuts back here. They're two small nuts that. onto the winch. The one's a negative and the other one's a positive. Now you can only get a socket onto those nuts. You can't get a, a wrench in here because of the plastic. The plastic pieces that they have on here to kind of keep the, the two wires separated from the negative and positive touching each another. So the only thing you can get on is the socket, but when you get the socket on here, you can't get the ratchet on with the socket because uh, this plastic is too close to here. So you can only slip the socket on, but you can't get the ratchet on too. So what I did was I put the socket on onto the nut, then I got a, a vice grips, and I put a vice grips onto the socket, and then I use that like a, a wrench to, to tighten the, the nut to get the wires tightened. So overall, if you like the design, we wanted to keep the fang, li fang lights visible a little bit. Plus, like I said, the lights kind of accent the wench. Um, but overall, we'll see how it works on the trails when we're out and about. And if we need to tow someone out or get out, we'll be the first ones to try out the new wench. And that, that's the other thing with having the, the wench up here instead of uh, down back here. It's easier to, to get to, for one, of pulling it out, for one. For two, you don't have to fiddle around down into here to find the, the switch here. Uh, to it's a lot more accessible. Yeah, to engage. So it's, or right, it's right there. Disengage the winch. So sounds good. We'll
we'll see how it works on the trails. And so it pretty much ends up our wench and bumper installation. <laughs> so guys, hopefully you enjoyed that video um, of the installation of the bumper and the wench. We appreciate you watching and sticking around for the whole video. If you want to see more, stay tuned. We have other items that we're going to attach to this machine and continue our builds. And we'll bring installation videos for those. Um, if you want to keep seeing more contact videos of us on the trails, anything that we're doing extra for our machines, please like, hit the subscribe button, share to friends. Um, if you're new to the channel, please come back. If you're already a member of the channel, thanks for sticking with us. Um, hopefully we'll see you guys on the trail soon. So check it out. So out on us on Facebook. We have a regular page, a public page, and we have a private page that we post all of our ride events at. So feel free to check us out. We're also on Instagram. So we're going to move on to the next installation. So stay tuned for that video when it gets posted and we'll see you guys later. Thanks again. Bye.